Hi guys and welcome to my channel. I'm Georgia and today I'm going to be showing you how I got this summery sort of beachy date night look by using the Anastasia Prism Palette and also a new product that I used was the Fenty Matchsticks in the shade Amber. So that's something you can have a look how I got on with that. Um, then stay tuned, can watch in this video and let me know what you think at the end. So I'm just going to start with foundation and I'm going in with the Superstay Full Coverage Foundation in the shade 03 True Ivory. I'm also using this new brush today, it's the Spectrum All About The Base brush in B01. Okay, so I've just took a few pumps at a time and I'm just going to go in with my brush. And then buff it into my skin. If you take a little bit of the product at a time, then it's kind of good because you can build it up and you don't get too much of the over cakiness. I mean, I do do this a lot. I do kind of put too much makeup on a lot of the time. So I try to stop myself from doing that, but it is kind of habit and just trying to do it quickly a lot of the time as well and just like shoving it on your face and getting it done. Okay, so this is the immediate half and half comparison of what this foundation does. It is kind of a bit more of a full coverage one, obviously not completely, and it depends how you layer it up and also how you plot your skin. But otherwise, this is just a difference between, like, you definitely can see by the eyes and, like, this sort of area, the discoloration is kind of quite hidden with this foundation already. So it is a good foundation, and I don't think it's actually too expensive either. I usually get it from Superdrug or Savers, and they do an offer. And then just gradually work up the amount of foundation you do have on your face because it makes it easier to work with whereas this you're like buffing into your skin whereas if you have too much on at once it kind of you're just moving the product around your face because there's a lot of it just moving on top of each other next i'm just going to go in with a bit of concealer this is the essence camouflage matte concealer in the shade 10 light rose just put a little bit under my eyes and then in the centre of my face as well but the tiniest little amount I'm just blending this out by dabbing again just because I do have product underneath I don't want to try and move it about too much next I'm going to go in with the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks and this is in the shade Amber I'm going to use this as a contour I haven't used this yet, so it's a new product to me, so I'm going to see how I can like work it. Um, hopefully it is a good shade for me. I did see a few reviews of people with pale skin using this shade as a contour, and I've always kind of struggled to find one that isn't like a muddy colour, but it is still a cool toned colour, but that also isn't like a bronzer where it just looks like I'm orange. I want to make it look like I've got a shadow to make it look like contour, you know. Um, so this is what it looks like here. And it is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Not that you need a massive stick to be using it. You kind of want it small to get that detail in or to use that line, then blend it out and add more. But it is just a lot smaller than I thought it would be, really. But it's for ease for use of the product, really, isn't it? So I'm just going to go and add a little bit in. I'm just going to do one side at a time just to see how it works out before I start doing anything else. On the on the end, I don't know if you can see, I've literally put that on my face and at first it wasn't coming out, maybe I do need to warm up before I use it, but it looks like it's just taking my makeup, my foundation off, but the top bit of that is foundation. So maybe I do need just to warm up on my hand first before I apply it to my face. It does blend out really nicely though. So this is the colour that it comes out at full pressure and obviously then you can blend that out too. It's definitely coming out a lot easier now I have warmed up so maybe it's something that you want to do before using it. Or maybe it's just because it's the very first time of it being used. Sorry, I'm going to go with the nose. So I just put it on my jawline there as well and blending it out. 
and then also up on my forehead here. If anything, I feel like I might need more product. I don't know. I'm gonna go with it to see anyway, you know. So it's worth testing these things out. Usually if I'd put that much product of anything else on, I feel like it wouldn't have blended in, it would have like stuck there. But it actually has blended out really nicely. So next I'm just going to go in with a press powder. This is just one that I've got at the moment. It's the Essence All About Matte Fixing Compact Powder. And then in with my Spectrum AO5 brush. Which isn't necessarily a powder, like face powder brush. It is a bit of a slanted one. But I kind of use it for everything. So the eyeshadow palette I'm going to be using today is the Anastasia Prism palette. And I'm just going to use a variation of brushes. Most of them are the Real Technique ones. This one is the Defining Crease brush. I like to use this one to kind of go in all over the colour and then also really get in, in that crease to kind of put the colour in there. Because it is a longer brush and it is slightly rounded, it is easier to put that in there like that. First one I'm just going to go in with Unity, which is this colour here, and I'm just going to put it all over my lid. Then I'm going to go with Eden, which is this one here. And then I'm going to go in with the shade Satin and use this brush, which is a shading brush by Real Techniques. Just a bit of a stub your end to it. And just use that to put it into my crease on my want first and then going to use the other brush just to blend it out. Then go with the shade Parallel, which is this one here. Ever so lightly, I'm just going to take the tiniest little bit, tap off, and then just start to work blending it in the corners here. And just slowly building up. Now that I've blended it all out, this is what it looks like. I kind of kept to the outer corner and slowly brought it in, and then did this shading here as well for them. Okay, so just used a mix of Pyramid and then Eternal there. For the glitter and then I'm just going to use that same brush that I was using to do the dark brown just now and just try and like blend the two together a little bit so it's not too harsh of a line. I'm going to use the Ted Baker eyeliner to add some wings. This eyeliner always turns out really dodgy. I think I do it too straight and I do it too much like, whereas this one seems really easy to do. It looks nice and curves a lot of the time and this just isn't. Or I do too long of a wing. I prefer to do this side at like a full length mirror so I can just hold my eye more and just do it like that. And this side's probably easier to do it that way. And is it like so annoying as well when you do one eyeliner and it's perfect and it's really good and then you do the one and you mess it up and then you have to go back to this one and even it out and then this one turns out looking tragic too. It's just the cycle of life I guess. For eyebrows I'm going to use my NYX Precision Brow Pencil and this is in the shade Ash Brown. It's got a little spoolie bit on one end. So my eyebrows I'm just going to do very slight light line just along here then we'll start using like stroke like movements just to kind of brush make it look like natural and with mascara I've got the Essence Lash Princess mascara I actually like this product a lot more than when I first tested it in the Essence video um, it has it is still as a wet product as it ever was but I think I've just got more of a hang of it and more used to ha being that wet so knowing how to use it and then just accepting the fact that if it smudges somewhere, it smudges somewhere. This is how it's going to be. I read somewhere that you should always like spin your brush inside your mascara and not pump it up and down. That causes a lot of air to get in there and dries out the product and also increases the chance of getting bacteria getting in. So I always had that you always don't twist it. And then plus I think it kind of coats the brush the way around rather than just getting a lot of product just on like certain areas. You twist it around in there then it helps to coat everything. It's Real Techniques large smudge brush, it's quite a small little, to actually go in and I use it to put um, highlight on the inside of my eyes here. So I'm going to go in and use the colour Lucid from the palette. I 
for blush, I'm just going to use my Avon blush in the colour Peach. It's a favourite of mine at the moment. I tend to do it on the apples of my cheeks, and then just blend out again, just so the colour all flows. And I also put a little bit on my forehead, on my nose, and on my chin, just to kind of bring the colour to the rest of my face as well. Otherwise, it is really obvious sometimes it's just blush, and because I'm so pale, I feel like a lot of the time... I need to add more colour to the rest of my face to make me look just healthy and glowy as well. Okay, then the bronze I've been using at the moment is the Essence Mosaic Compact Powder. It is quite light and it's quite like shimmery as well, which I like. And the idea of bronzer is kind of put it where anywhere that the sun would naturally hit or you'd look glowy or tanned from. And obviously sometimes you can put it in different areas of your face and if you do tan a lot on your nose, you might not necessarily want to put it on your nose. But you want to put it in places that you look like you've been tanned and it's naturally glowing. Originally I wanted to do red lips for this look because I wanted it to be like a sultry summer date night kind of look but I think it's going to be a bit too much for like what my eyeshadow has been like now and plus I'm about to go out during the day so I think I'm going to stick to like a nude look. I did see a video the other day that Catherine Lights did where she did a lip tutorial and she used a lip liner, like a nude lipstick and the lip gloss to achieve like bigger looking lips and since then I've been kind of like testing it out too. So this is my variation of that. These are the products I'm using. I have got this Gosh uh, lip liner. I don't even know if it says what colour it is anymore. Uh, Nougat Crisp. And then I'm going to go in with the Revolution Soth lipstick in the colour Syrup. And then I have got a lip gloss at the moment. This is a plumping lip gloss by Bare Minerals. It is the Moxie plumping lip gloss in the shade Charmer. So first of all, we're going to start off with your lip liner. And depending how much you overdraw your lips, but starting in the middle. And then when you get to the outer edge, you don't want to overline there, you want to bring it back down to your natural lip line, just so this middle bit looks quite like plump and pout. And you can probably leave it like that because this lipstick is quite a glossy lipstick so it has got the shine to it already but I'm just going to add that lip gloss on to add the extra shine to. My mum had actually bought my sisters and I these lip glosses for Christmas but I hadn't used mine yet. It was just in the drawer under my bed because I didn't really used to like wearing lip glosses. I didn't used to like having glossy lips. It was like all about the matte lip so like no hair gets stuck to it, no food gets stuck to it. But um, I'm giving things a try, you know, because it's a different sort of look and this is actually a really cute lip gloss. It's a really nice colour and it's minty too. So it smells nice and it helps to like freshen your breath. So, you know, that's always an extra. This is one of my favourite highlighters of all time. It is the Soth collaboration with Revolution. I use it all the time. It's actually my sister's, so <laughs> thanks Tony. But yeah, I use it at the time, she uses it at the time, absolutely love it. They've got some really gorgeous colours in there. And even these, like, maybe not those two so much for me, but even these darker, like, warmer toned colours do work quite well on me sometimes. So it's nice not to have, like, just one or two in the pan that you can actually use. I actually use pretty much all of them, obviously on different occasions and stuff. But I think I'm just going with the two in the end here. Just going with a mix of that. I'm just using a fan brush today. Just taking it as high as possible up on the cheekbone here because then it looks like you've got really high cheekbones because that's where the light would naturally catch it. But when you put the highlighter on, that's then like looks like that's the light. Especially in the summer, like I know we all get sweaty and stuff anyway, but if you have a bit of highlighter on, it looks like it's like intentional. Like it looks like you're just glowing, glowing like. You're not even hot, you know it's sweaty, you're just glowing. So it's good to kind of do this to like prepare yourself for the sweat that's going to come because at least you can just pretend like that's my makeup. Then I'm going to use the same brush I used earlier for the inner corner of my eyes, but I'm just going to go in with the lightish shade of the two that I've been using. I'm just grabbing a bit of that, dusting a little bit off, and then I'm just going to put it. the little tiny bit on the end of my nose and then a little bit here as well just above my new fake cupid bow I have got the Laura Geller Gilded Honey Highlighter and I'm just going to go in with my fan brush again and 
and just put it onto my shoulders, my collarbones and stuff. This is like especially good in the summer because then you just look so glowing, so radiant, like you've been out in the sun. In reality, I haven't spent a single day out there. Then I'm going to finish it all with the Kat Von D Makeup Setting Mist. I tend to like to shake it and then almost do little circles with the edge of bottle as well, like this, up and down, because not only with this one, but I find with other setting sprays as well, it doesn't actually always come out in a fine mist. You'll get some massive, like, blobs of it coming out, and of course it goes straight into your face and it sits there. So I like to kind of do this motion where I shake around, up and down, but also round and round, so it kind of just, I don't know, it feels like it disperses a bit more. Okay, so this is the finished look. I just took my hair down, this is how messy it normally is and I decided to leave that because it's too hot to be bothering to try and like straighten it or curl it again and it's just too hot for me to think that my hair's even going to behave anyway. The eyeshadow and everything turned out really nice, like it turned out much better than I thought I was able to do it, so I really like that. And then just the rest of the skin as well, I really like the Fenty contour stick as well, like it was a really nice shade on my skin tone, so I'm definitely looking forward to using that again and again and again. I hope you liked it, I hope you liked this video. Um, like I said Tom Tom again, like I really like playing around makeup and just experimenting and I really like making videos too and sitting down and actually doing the editing and stuff afterwards and I do feel like it's quite a nice process to sit there and actually make myself look pretty as well even on days when I'm not going out and doing anything it's given me a chance to actually do something and feel good about myself too so that's something that I really like from it so yeah I hope you like this video okay I'm off to do my food shopping so I will see you all later bye